What is a cybersecurity analyst? In this video, I'm going to talk about the cybersecurity analyst role, and you're going to learn about some of the different job responsibilities, the salary, kind of an overview of the job, some different job titles you can look for on social media or on job boards to try to find these openings. The Some of the tools you might use as well as do you need certs or do you need college education or is this the type of job where you can just go take some trainings online and go ahead and do it. So we'll talk about all that in this particular video. So first off, I want you to understand the cybersecurity analysts in general are the first line of defense, or at least one of the first lines of defense for the organization's networks, the systems, as well as the data from different cyber threats. So typically, cybersecurity analysts, and for the purposes of this video, we're going to blend in security operations center or SOC analyst and just call them the same thing. Technically, they're different roles, but depending on the organization, they actually are often the same role. So it really depends on where you work at. But for our purposes in this video, we're going to blend them together because a lot of the specific job responsibilities are very similar, again, unless you go to certain companies where they are very niche. So keep that in mind for this video. So if you're screaming right now saying it's not a SOC analyst, just please understand that we're just doing this for the purposes of this video so that way everyone can kind of see the general idea of what these two types of roles, so cybersecurity analysts and SOC analysts, are wrapped up to do. So other job titles, as I mentioned, SOC analyst, you may see it listed as that. You might see it also as information security analyst. Again, without getting into semantics of what these things actually are, understand that the vast majority of people writing these job descriptions have no clue on the difference of differences of the intricacies between an information security analyst, a SOC analyst, and a cybersecurity analyst. So in many cases, and I would posit to say in the majority of cases, when you're looking for these jobs out there, the skills they're looking for are going to be the same across InfoSec analysts, SOC analysts, and cybersecurity analysts in the vast majority of companies out there. So if you're right now looking for SOC analyst jobs, guess what? Type in the search cybersecurity analyst or any of these other ones that I'll also list before the, below the video as well. And you may find a job that you're looking for that nobody else is seeing because they're only looking for, say, a SOC analyst or InfoSec analyst. So some of the other titles here are as well, vulnerability analyst, IR analyst, cybersecurity specialist, et cetera. Again, below this video in the description, I've got several more that I'm just going to post in there so you can see a, a different job titles that it might be. And I encourage you to go look at those and look up some of the skills they're looking for because that's really the key to finding the job that might be a great match for you. So speaking of jobs, what are some of those responsibilities you might do as either a cybersecurity analyst, InfoSec analyst, SOC analyst, et cetera? One of the key things you're going to be monitoring and analyzing network traffic. So use a variety of tools like SIM tools, IDS, IPS systems, and you're basically going to take that information, try to make sense of it, and identify any potential threats or potential incidents. Now, an incident doesn't mean that it's a super hacker outside the company doing it. It could just be Larry in accounting, clicking something, or visiting a website he shouldn't have. So an incident doesn't necessarily mean that something malicious happened, but it means something happened, something outside of the normal. So just keep that in mind with some of the terminology that you might hear me using. You'll also be identifying or trying to identify any relevant threats to the organization. Now, that doesn't just mean looking at network logs and things like that. It also means using things like threat intelligence and trying to determine are there actual threats targeting our industry or our organization? And if so, are they likely to target us and how might they target us? Because different threat actors usually will have different TTPs or tactics, techniques, procedures, and how they do things. And they also, different threat actors, target certain industries. So if you're in healthcare and the threat actor normally goes after financial services, then just because it's a, there's a data breach in the news about some bank got breached, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden you have to worry about that particular threat actor. So just keep that stuff in mind as well. You'll also be identifying and prioritizing different vulnerabilities that you discover and determining, do we already have security controls in place that will block this and protect against it, or do we need to establish something? And as part of that, you'll be involved in security assessments to identify what security controls we have in place. Can they be bypassed? And this is where in security assessments, this is where we are also wrap in things like pen testing or ethical hacking or red teaming, the things you, you hear about that are super sexy in cyber. That's where we wrap into those things as well. So security assessments wrap in red teaming, blue teaming, purple teaming, and there's a million different colors these days on different teams. But just understand that the overall goal there is to assess the organization's defenses and try to identify, do we have the right stuff in place? And if not, well, let's try to get that right stuff in place. And then you will be involved as part of the IR process as well, usually. Um, tier one level, probably not so much. 
aside from just escalating things, but there'll be certain things you may have to do. And that'll be, depending on the organization you're with, they'll let you know exactly what you're supposed to do or expected to do as a tier one analyst. And then of course, training. So typically this is gonna be involved in training like end users on why you should do stuff. You'll be involved in security awareness training. Depending on the organization itself, you may be leading security awareness training or you might just be part of the security awareness training with a third party tool or software or course or whatever. And then of course, reporting your findings, that means escalation through ticketing systems. That means reporting to other stakeholders across the organization. Uh, depending on where you work at, if you work for like an MSSP, which is a managed security service provider, you may also be reporting to customers. So external customers of saying, hey, this is what we're seeing because they may be sourcing you or using you for that tier one analyst type of work. So what, what about the money, right? Let's, let's talk about money. How are you going to pay your bills? Well, here in the U.S., typically speaking, the vast majority of cases, around 70000 to about 80000 is your starting rate for a cybersecurity analyst, InfoSec analyst, SOC analyst, et cetera. Again, depends on where you live, depends on location, uh, company, all these other things. But that's kind of the general range. Some places I've seen as low as like 50,000. But it, again, it really depends. You usually won't get six figures until you move into like tier two, tier three, which at that point you're moving more into a responsibility of senior, senior type of person on the IR team or the incident response team. Uh, in the UK, 30,000 to 60,000 pounds, and then India, six to eight lakhs per year. So there's a variety of tools you may use or that you will use. Again, SIM tools, this could be things like your Splunks, your crew radars of the world, a different ID, IDPS or intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. You'll definitely be using vulnerability scanners, so that could be Nessus, OpenVos, et cetera, or Qualys is another one. Different types of firewalls, so cloud-based firewalls, uh, on-prem firewalls, WAF firewalls, you know, web application firewalls. So a variety of firewalls you'll be involved with. You may not do the actual configuration. That may be, the, uh, depending on the org, you might have a network security team that does that or the IT team might do that, but you may be involved in the configuration. So you, you want to at least be familiar with firewalls, firewall rules. You also be working with tools like data loss prevention tools or DLP, as well as identity access management tools. So things like SailPoint or our Active Directory. What about education? Do you need college degrees, search? you need to collect all that stuff? Well, if you're going to get a certification, the kind of the de facto industry standard, at least right now, and it's been that way for years, is a CompTIA Sec Plus. And the reason for that is because it gives you a very broad entry-level knowledge of security topics, and it gives you a little bit of exposure to things like scripting and stuff. So it is a good entry-level cert. If you have the money for it, if you don't have the money to take the actual certification, then I just recommend you buy a, a book or a course or there's some free Security Plus playlist on YouTube. In fact, depending on when you're watching this, we will have a Security Plus playlist out there. So either stay tuned for that, or you'll just go look for that on the channel. Uh, some other ones you may get that I've seen people get in this type of role, usually after they get a year or two experience, is the GAIAC Certified Incident Handler, the EC Console Incident Handler, which is an ECIH, and then also from EC Console, the Certified Ethical Hacker, um, they have two versions of that. One's a knowledge-based one. One's a supposedly a hands-on um, thing as well. But the only purpose behind that really would be to kind of give you some knowledge of what an attacker thinks like, their mindset. And there are some other ones out there you can get if you want to dive more into the hands-on pen testing, hacking stuff to kind of get real exposure to it. Then another good one is from TCM Security. It's called the PNPT, so the Professional Network Penetration Tester. So basically, it's you uh, you sign up for that with them. It's um, I think it's like four hundred, three or four hundred dollars U.S. for the voucher, and I think if it's if you pay like four four hundred bucks, and that's the time of this filming, it might go up. But you basically get like a voucher, and I think the training as well. Uh, but it's it's founded by uh, the TCM Security is founded by Heath Adams. He's a good guy. He's got a uh, YouTube channel, I believe, called Cyber Mentor. Definitely check him out as well. Really good guy. Helps a lot of people, and that's another cert if you're looking to get your pen testing skills up, I highly, highly recommend that one. So some key takeaways here of the cybersecurity analyst role. First line of defense, that's kind of your job. In most cases, you're going to be starting out obviously tier one. And in that case, you're mostly going to be just escalating things and working off existing playbooks and then just kind of getting the lay of the land essentially. But usually after like six months to a year of like working different incidents and doing your day-to-day -day stuff, you get really, really good at things. 
And then from there, you can move into more senior levels. And of course, you're going to be involved in the incident response process, as I mentioned. And depending on the organization, you might be involved like day one. They might pull you into the malware lab and start analyzing things and seeing what's going on. So really, really cool role that you can work. This is definitely a technical role. So if you're looking for a non-technical role, then this is not for you. This is for people that want to get your hands dirty with this different systems, different applications, and really be that first line of defense against threat actors.